everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is the Spanish guy who tries to draw, James Cork. And with me I have podcasting machine and planes walker extraordinaire, Norman Sanso. It's Christmas Eve. Yay! And forget what I said about last episode about this is going to be next week episode because I'm derpy like that. <laughs> but scheduling on everybody else's parts. <laughs> And also we have the man, the myth, the hippogriff, also a new reviewer, Silverquill. There can only be one, you lord. <laughs> Time to duel? No, fight in the middle of the, in, in the middle of a plane between Ted Anderson and Emil Larson. Let's see who's the one who writes the best funny Bill confidential story. Uh, spoiler warning, it's Emil Larson. And today we're going to be talking about the 2000 and 14, is it? Or 2013 holiday special? I believe 2014. 2014. The 2014 holiday special. Uh, Equestria Girls holiday special. Written by Ted Anderson with art by Tony Fleeks. And to give the synopsis of this one is very easy. It's Ponyville Confidential in the Equestria Girls universe. Yes. yes. A good deal more nasty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you get a <laughs> villain called Anonymous. <laughs> oh no yeah the bad guy of this comic is Anon <laughs> oh my gosh how to tackle this one we're gonna go with themes with this one actually because I'm not sure what to say that we didn't say on, on previous episodes because I don't know I think this is a very stock comic I am delegating a lot uh, lately and I'm not the one uh, like tooting the horn and it's like guys follow me no I'd rather just hear what you guys have to say see what else uh, can I add to, to your opinions but I really don't know how to handle this one so what do you what 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 you what would you make of this uh, comic like we could even go with from first impressions to conclusions because it's not much else to talk about now isn't there well, okay, here's the thing. If we do that, we have to remember that this is a double special. Yay! We're going to review the 2015 uh, Chris, uh, holiday special. Oh, yeah, so, but yeah. that one comes later. We're going to focus on this one yeah, first. So no, we, 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 come on. Dude, yeah, don't I, know, be, I know. Don't be. So, I know, but see. So, okay, we, we Silver, to... what, will you, what are your first impressions on, the, on, on, on this comic? Well, this is a very shifting tone comic. I mean, first, it's just the friends getting all together, and there's actually some nice interaction with Sunset expanding not only on her new setting within the uh, within the Equestria Girls world, but where she was in uh, Equestria. She didn't really get... She wasn't tight with her family. In fact, one wonders, did her parents even raise an alarm when she disappeared from their world? But then she starts becoming this uh, pariah as someone starts leaking all the all of her friends' embarrassing secrets, and all eyes turn towards her, which because, in fairness, she did do that tactic before. Now, this seems to fly in the face of this happens right after Rainbow Rocks. So, can we really? Is it really fair to regress to that uh, to that distrust? That goes on for a while. I do love the scene where Sunset is communicating with Twilight through the book, and they bring up this great idea. In Equestria, they have Wendigos, the spirits of malice that feed on negativity. We have the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Our Wendigos are called 4chan, Reddit, and Tumblr. But then at the very end, uh, there's that scene where everyone's shouting at Sunset in the hallway and she's in tears, and that's just harsh. And then at the very end, where we find out who done it, this, the comic shifts protagonists, basically. Suddenly it's focusing on... Uh, well, uh, is it okay if I just say it right now? Oh, yeah, go ahead. The human versions of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? Why are we focusing on them? And this is actually very different from Ponyville Confidential. They did that because they wanted to get stories. Mm -hmm. and But they were they were hating every minute of it. This one, they're being spiteful little demons who just were doing this. Okay, they wanted their sister's attention. I have no idea why Scootaloo joined in. I, I guess she thought, if I can eliminate Sunset Shimmer, Rainbow Dash will be all mine. Mine! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was thinking about that one too, but yeah. Yeah, the fact that they get forgiven in pretty much two panels after what they put the entire, not just uh, the, the, the human main six, the human main five and Sunset through, but the entire school, they have just been 
hateful and spiteful. I didn't like these three. I wanted to put them in a blender. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't subscribe to that kind of thing. I have never met a child that is so hateful. And yeah, we all can agree that children are jerks. Yeah, of course. They are jerks. They're children. But these three in particular, they have good role models to follow. Like, Apple Bloom has Applejack, uh, uh, Scootaloo, as much as Rainbow Dash is a rainbow jerk. She is a better role model than, say, Trixie. And pff, there is no better role model than, role model than, than a hardworking rarity uh, for Sweetable. So it's like, where is this anger coming from? This is so petty and, for lack of a better word, childish. I don't care if you're children. This is unjustified. Spreading this much hatred, this is ridiculous. Well, now, thankfully, they they do fess up. It, it's important that they fess up. I will say, I really dislike how quick the human five were to turn on Sunset. Although I'm I'm reminded, though, who here has read the Yu-Gi-Oh manga, the original? I have. Wait, original? Wait, manga? Man, man, there's no original. There's only the manga. So yeah, I've read it. Wait, well, okay. We, when it was Yugi, where we didn't bring in all these other stand-in her- heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the, there is a scene where Yugi has to confront his, be, uh, the shadow of his best friend, who at one time was a bully, and he even said, he even used the line from Yugi's past about how he's such a wimp. Mm-hmm. And that hurts. It hurts to be reminded of this time when a friend was a bully. But Yugi makes the point, there is no past or present in friendship. You, you focus on the here and now, or past or future. You don't let what happened influence what where you are now. And this is sort of the opposite. This is regressing what, everything they did in Rainbow Rocks. I Here's the thing. I, I don't know if this is after or before Rainbow Rocks because... Oh, oh it's after. It's after. It's after. after. Hmm. Yeah, she has, 2014, she has, the movie happened. Yeah. Well, she has the journal to communicate with Twilight. It's definitely not after Friendship Games, because Friendship Games hadn't happened at that time. No, because it does make a lot of sense if it was before Rainbow Rocks, because she just turned good and everybody was still... Well, they want to be friends with her, but they're still... What's the one looking for? Um, cautious of her actions and whatnot. And once they accepted her, Aha, this is my plan to sabotage your... Like, aha. But now if you say this after Rainbow Rocks, it makes no sense. It, it is after Rainbow Rocks. I, I again, I point to the journal because Sunset never even wrote in it until Rainbow Rocks. And the funny thing is, they say, "Oh, well, what's the sleepover? It's that thing you just had in the last movie." Well, see, if if it was before Rainbow Rock, it does make a lot of sense. But it's not. I'm sorry. The I, the co- the chain of events. I gotta be pretty rigid on this one. I know, but okay, uh, here's the thing, like, after rereading this and get, forgetting most of Rainbow Rock and when the timeline was put, to me, this would make a better comic and better timeline if it was after the first Equestria Girls. Very true, but unfortunately, elements within it I mean, I, I pretty much have to place it after. After the second movie. True, but I don't know. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to work the journal angle for the starters. You wouldn't be able to make that work. To me, it makes, feels much better if it was after the first one. So, I don't know. Well, but it isn't, it isn't. I, I know, it, it would make sense, but unfortunately, elements in play kind of force the timeline. Mm. Although I do wonder, there is one scene towards the end where Sunset's really hit rock bottom. Uh, she's in the library, and Twilight's book bed is still there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes no sense. Where is, where is Sunset living? There was a comic where it shows that she's living in the locker room for, like, the gym equipment. And yeah. I'm like, oh, God. I was thinking that. God, uh, that's gross. You know what? This is one of those uh, questions or scenarios or things that... We'll never get a straight answer because it involves a lot of storytelling and a lot of setup for... Ah, oh, effort! Oh, no, it involves having to do your job. <laughs> no, okay, true, but here's the thing. This is just a movie. All those kind of things, we don't, they don't really need it. For me personally, I've read a lot of fanfic involving um, 
sunset and where she lives. And the thing that most people are saying, she lives in an apartment. How does she get her cash? She has a job part-time or something like that, or does things in the past for blah, blah, blah. And yeah, she has a small apartment, blah, 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 and so on. And that's how she lives. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I see her more somehow extorting. That was her previously, but... Eh. She extorted a lot of money. Yeah, that was her previously, but I don't know. It, now we're going to hit canon territory and whatnot, but uh, it's hard when you don't I'm not, have a you guys are. <laughs> yeah, you're not saying anything yet. But it's hard when you don't have a solid ground. or It's hard to explain things when you don't have anything to talk about. Like, where does Sunset live? And in this picture, we see her living in the library. Okay, terrible defense or terrible security in the school. All right. We've established at least that's in, in keeping with uh, the show. School security is awful. Besides that, like, what else? What else? No, I wanted well, to mention that you did say before that the main six, or well, the main five, turn into sunset very quickly. They basically go from liking her, being friends with her, to just the opposites. Like, no, we don't want to talk to you. We, uh, we're not going to listen to reason. We We don't like you anymore. Leave us alone. First, not only are they teenagers, and that has happened, but that happened to me recently. Like that happened to me within this year, where I had people with uh, that th- whom I considered my friends, and literally in the time span of a day, I-, I lost all of them, all due to a gross misunderstanding. So uh, this kind of situation does happen; it still happens, mm. and you have to be very careful with how it's handled. Which is weird why the main six decide to react this way and suddenly turn around in the, in, in, so quickly. They are so fast to unfriend Sunset and yet they are also so fast to forgive, to forgive their sisters. Uh, no, they do forgive Sunset, but they, they kind of like can't wave it. They are like, they, they forgive her by, by not mentioning it. No, okay, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. When, when you're dealing with family, situations is a bit different because Family, you, you know what I mean, right? Like, if a s- sibling steals your, let's just say, favorite pen or pencil or whatever, Mr. Smarty Pants doll, you forgive them, but in a very long period of time. But you're, mm-hmm. you're angry, but you'll forgive them. But if your friend... Yeah, but this comic is implying that your friends are also your family. Yeah, well, but... Because Sunset definitely doesn't have any family. These are the people that she could first call their family. Yeah, but you have to also remember the scenario or the, the setting here is Sunset was a villain who thrived on manipulation and blackmail and all yeah, this that stuff. She got redeemed in the second movie. <laughs> they got okay. their trust back. Here's, in their second, the, see, second here's movie. the problem by... Okay, here, the major problem for this comic in general is the setting of when... Because if it's done after the first movie, it makes a lot of sense. But it's not after the first movie, Norman. She has the diary. I know, Good but... grief. Are you listening? I know, but here's the thing. Like... <laughs> I... Listen to I... us, man. Listen know, to I mean, us. I know. I understand. I fully understand that. But you see where I'm going here. Like, after a period of long time, after not reading the book and forgetting scenes from Rainbow Rocks, this comic when you read it it does make a lot of sense if it goes for the if it goes after the first uh, movie but since it's not it brings up a whole lot of questions but i don't know silver what help i'm slapping myself now i'm slapping myself he won't get it (laughs) i can't help you norman because your the basic argument is to enjoy this comic you have to forget the second movie not really and i gotta say i mean and, and, and after have you watched uh Friendship Games, I think Rainbow Rocks is my favorite of the three. Yeah, so I can't forget it. I, I, I'm not saying forget. Yeah, but Norman, you, no. cannot, you cannot say that it didn't happen or no, that no, okay. this comic is happening in between them. No, because the diary was introduced. This is clearly happening after the second movie. I know, but here's the thing. Like, for me personally, like, personally, yes, I do agree that Rainbow Rock does exist. I'm not... I'm not saying it does not. I'm just saying that to really enjoy this book or this comic, you have to put it in between one and two. Norman, Norman, this, no, it's, 
It doesn't work. This is not the same thing as saying to enjoy Star Wars, you have to ignore the prequels, or to enjoy Indiana Jones, you have to enjoy the fourth movie, or to enjoy Star Trek, you have to ignore the J.J. Abrams versions. It's like, it's not the same. I'm not saying those series do not exist. I'm just saying that if this was put in between, it would be much better in in the terms of story. But since it's not, I don't know. For me personally, just think about it that way. I'm not saying that Rainbow Rock does not exist. There's a difference. But you're saying that it shouldn't exist for this no. comic to make sense. I'm not saying that. I'm saying put this in between one and two. Uh, but we can't. Unfortunately, what's done is done. Yeah. It's it's impossible to do that now, Norman. Yeah, yeah. But I I think <laughs> we kind of roll around in this for a while. So no, I just finish that. Thing is that there is not much else to say because I don't know what else to mention about this comic no, other the, than the pictures, like the art, like the slumber party at Rarity. I love, I love the costume. I, I really do. The artwork is fine. I do find the the artwork of Sweetie Belle after Sunset's just forgiven her. Mm-hmm, Sweetie that... Belle looks a little too happy. <laughs> it's oh. like, see, my secret plan was to clump you all along, Sunset. Yeah. <laughs> Sundari <laughs> Sundari uh, Bell I mean it's it's basically uh, oh please tell me that was in Twilight Secret Ship but if not we've missed no uh, there's an expansion that uh, ages up all the CMC's and all the foals yeah I know that it's like in, they're in college but well we're getting off topic here <laughs> but I'm just scroll. I'm just flipping through trying to find yeah, Sweetie Belle is saying, we're so sorry, we had no idea what would happen to you. Mm-hmm. And here she is, she looks so gleeful. Well, Sunset is like, oh, my spine. <laughs> yeah, maybe there was some misunderstanding on the way that it was written on the script. Because uh, they went, they go from from anime crying to leap forward, hug, oh, so happy. Mm. By the way, that whole, of course I forgive you, Apple Bloom, your family, your family. Yeah, you know, it's very difficult to forgive to forgive people, most of all, to forgive people from your family. Yeah, true. And I know that. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's, it's like, and because, for the fact that you are family, you can allow yourself to forgive that person when you feel it's right. Not when the script is telling you to do that. If I was in Applejack's position and my sister will, my sister will never do something like this first. She ain't that petty. But she came to me and said something like, "Hey, I've been spreading rumors about you on the internet." <laughs> okay, who like, like it? I, 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 I will, it will be like you know that I live in the same house as you, <laughs> and I know exactly when you are sleeping, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You see all your plushies? You're going to find them in the trash compactor tomorrow. <laughs> if no. you find any, <laughs> like, no, it's 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 the kind of thing. Family is very difficult to forgive your family. Good grief, is it difficult to forgive your family? Oh, yeah. Uh, true. But uh, still. I think we might want to just talk about Sweetie Belle and Rarity in the car ride over, which, by the way, I just realized, who's driving them? Parents? Pama? I don't know. That just, or was it one of those new electronic smart cars? Oh, yeah. Those Google drive your car self thingies. Buck, buckle up, Rarity. But, but it moves I, with I, magic. I, I do like that at least they're they're acknowledging that it's not a perfect resolution. The Crusaders yeah. Well they're not even called the Crusaders in this universe, but these three, they apologize to everyone. Celestia actually behaves like a principal and gives them half a year's worth of detention. Wow. Which is pretty severe, but I can't say un unwarranted. Come on, think about it, Silver. It's mass chaos. Like, I agree with Celestia's decision here. Like, it's mass chaos. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Celestia is acting like an actual di- <laughs> head of the school. Wow, principal. And they acknowledge they can't take back the secrets they leaked. And Rarity is serious about it, but at least says you made an effort to correct your mistake, and that counts. I, despite our frustration with the hasty forgiveness... It is good to correct your mistakes. True that. That that effort counts for something. So I won't say this is irredeemable. It's just not really something I enjoy. I, after seeing it the first time or reading it the first time, I really felt no need to go back and see it again. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Uh, it's it kind of hurts because this was a very good idea of a comic. I like when they take 
uh, the concept of how social networks and the internet in general can hurt somebody in the real world because information moves a lot faster. It's a lot easier to leak something out there and and to release something that you don't want people to know about. And suddenly it's posted all over Facebook. Everybody knows they use my stable, by the way. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, like somebody posts an embarrassing picture on Twitter. It goes viral. It has thousands of likes and a bunch of retweets. And somebody posts it on Tumblr and Tumblr, uh, Tumblr people are like tearing, per- tearing that person apart. Uh, it's very easy to do that. And they could have made such interesting, uh, uh, in- interesting social commentary on-, on that regard. And it's not like Ted Anderson is. Uh, a stranger to social commentary. He tried. He does that in pretty much all of his comics, but I don't think he succeeds very much on this one. Uh, they just take it and they make a retread of Ponyville Confidential. In my opinion, without the likability. Because in Ponyville Confidential, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, they were shown at the, at one part of the episode, before they started to leak secrets of the main six, they started to have uh, regrets about what they were doing having second thoughts about it, not enjoying their job anymore. And when the problem hits the fan and they start getting shunned by the rest of the town, that's when they make the apology. So there was a very, uh, there was a very organic moment where the, the, the CMCs were ostracized by the rest of the town and that uh, is what moved them to apologize, make a public apology, and uncover the one that was really behind it, that was Diamond here and their blackmailing. Uh, in this one, there wasn't such a thing. They just come through and say, yeah, it was us. Oh, we instantly forgive you. That's not how it works. Mm, true, but I don't know. Overall, we're giving it too much time for this comic. I think we should go for final thoughts. It didn't happen. No, I... <laughs> It happened, but let's just admit, we it could have been more. It has interesting ideas. It has interesting ideas on social media, on the on the concept that you can't just say, I'm sorry, and all is magically undone. There's always consequence to a mistake. The desire to fix things counts for a lot. People respect that. But sadly, it's just not a great presentation. I remember so many fans were upset at this and just, livid at one point the yuletide cheer was not to be found and so it's best left forgotten like norman and movie two hey I, it did, it did <laughs> exist <laughs> according to norman's universe <laughs> the movie two never happened hey. i thought i didn't like rainbow rocks norman straight up doesn't want to even acknowledge it wow. i did not say that stop playing. no 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 you know what from now on we're going to do like norman and we're going to not acknowledge his existence <laughs> he's just a recording device uh, uh, kill you uh, but did, do you hear something? I don't hear anything. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. I, I I don't know. Maybe we should just keep having discussions without Norman here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kill you. This sounds like <laughs> a good plan. I'm sure if Norman were here, he'd approve. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he will like it a lot. Now, in today's episode, Norman's <laughs> deepest secrets. What I could learn at Buck 2014. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Anyway. Um, as for me, that... I, I enjoy the book. I enjoy the story, but with the caveat of inserting it between one and two. But since you guys don't want to do that, we did not know. Yeah. He keeps saying it. I'm going to murder this guy, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's no getting around this fact. The I journal know. is there. That is, There are so few continuity markers within My Little Pony. Okay, they've been I a little more... No. They've, they've been a little more continuity heavy lately, but... Violars, you can shift things around to where it makes sense, but in this case... I know you can't, but to me, it's one of those things where, okay, you need to really close a blind... You need, sorry, you need, you really need to take... Um, what's the phrase again? Uh, close an eye just to make it work. Because if not, you're going to, as you say, the fandom will be livid. Yes. I don't know. I was livid at first, but after forgetting a few scenes, like forgetting how things work, and just reading it again as it is, eh, it worked. I, good Lord, you, it means you have to shut down your brain. Here, hang on. Let me see if I can uh, find a little something to... Uh, look, here, I'm just going to throw myself out a window and see if I uh, if I can forget, and this is good. Oh, 
fell, he fell right on the greenhouse. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, the comic still stinks. <laughs> also, <laughs> my hip. <laughs> uh, but Silver, it, it, what is that thin jutting from your head? Oh, oh god, that is a sheer, sheer, sheer of glass. Oh god, are you okay? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I am a glass of corn. <laughs> Uh, well, that's my point of Man, view. I know that I, I know that you like are used to die, but not in here. I thought this was a safe haven for you. <laughs> Nothing is safe from stupidity. Uh, but honestly speaking, that's my point of view, and that's how I look at it. So if you guys don't agree, eh. <laughs> I blame Norman. What about you, James? <laughs> uh, I love the parts where it's so painfully relatable. Like anything with anything with with sunset, uh, being upset, being accused of, ah, oh, you are doing this. No, I am not doing any of this. Like I, I love those parts because I can totally get on her uh, on her shoes because I've been there, and in every in some aspects nowadays I'm still there in that position, as ridiculous as it is, and it's something that I really enjoyed. But overall, it's a Aside from the artwork, it's an uninspired, boring, contrived, and quite manipulative version of Ponyville Confidential, where they substituted, not only they changed ponies with humans, but they changed the pacing and the tone of the whole thing. And to be honest, when I think of this comic, I don't think about Christmas. It doesn't feel like a holiday special, other than it takes place in uh, in winter. It's snowing, and at the end they are all wearing Christmas sweaters and they're drinking hot chocolate. I mean, besides that, it's, there's not much Christmas going on around it. So, uh, I don't know. You're gonna put the same story in the middle of the summer and call it, uh, winter solstice or summer, uh, summer sun, uh, celebrations, whatever. It's like, the <laughs> end of the football league, like, <laughs> the Super Bowl special. <laughs> like, you're gonna call it anything else. Put it on any other setting, and it would have been exactly the same. Oh, yeah. The Christmas setting doesn't do anything for it. <sighs> but still, but still, I enjoyed it. You, you two apparently don't. But hey, we got the 2015 Christmas special. Hey, I'm not saying I don't. I have a bit of enjoyment out of it. We just suffer from this horrible affliction called memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, good Wait, thing I don't I have thought it. You were, I thought you were there. How did you manage to pull the glass out of your head? Very painfully and with much profanity. <laughs> but I censored myself so the guy who oh. made me jump out a window doesn't have to edit more. Hey, that's sweetie you're bro's way, job. You're way too, you're way too kind. But anyway, way but too anyway. Kind. Because we're family. Yay, right? Okay. Yeah, everything is forgiven, Norman. Yay, <laughs> family. <laughs> yes, I'm the creepy uncle. <laughs> I thought Hello, I was family. the creepy uncle. Let's all oh, be creepy God. uncles. <laughs> and our families. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so right now we're going to jump straight onto another comic. This one more holiday theme than the other mm-hmm. one. At least there is a bit of a theme going on here. And it's the 2015 holiday special written by Katie Cook and drawn by Katie Cook, Brenda Hickey, Agnes Garbowska, Andy Price, and colors by Heather Breckel. <laughs> and a pear and tree in one... a pear tree. <laughs> tree. <laughs> So, the story of this comic is actually rather simple because it's not just one story, it's several. Twilight Sparkle and Spike get caught in the middle of a, s- a snowstorm while waiting for the train to go back to Ponyville. Uh, it's too windy, too snowy, so Twilight cannot fly. And while they're waiting on it, uh, Twilight wants to read a book to entertain Spike. Thing is that the book that she was going to read it was forgotten at her parents' house. So they have to rely on children's books that are available to be bought at the local, at the close by Starbucks. <laughs> that's a Starbucks. I mean, come on. There is no way to lamb, to, uh, lamb shade it anymore. And that's what the comic is about. It's Twilight reading Spike some children's, uh, stories that she's taking from this coffee shop. And the, the structure of the comic, it works in that every story is drawn by a different artist. So the different uh, art styles differentiate the different storylines. So, uh, what did you guys think of this one? What, what are your thoughts on it? It really breaks down into which one is your favorite story. I mean, we've got three to choose from, each one its own little, uh, microcosm with its own style that, like you say, helps make it visually distinct. My favorite was Twas the Night Before Hearthswarming Eve. 
Oh, that one, Andy Price. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, a, a fun, uh, wonderfully drawn, great poem where I especially love that Big Macintosh regards Smarty Pants as an action figure. <laughs> Poor Big Mac is tra- is the, the consummate male stereotype. You must be strong, you must be silent, you must be obedient, and above all else, that's not a doll you're playing with when you change from <laughs> uniform to uniform. It's an action figure. <laughs> Actually, I have a strange st- story to tell in light of this, because why not? Uh, I was at a Toys R Us recently, and they had a maps out because it's the holiday season and parents are borderline killing one another to find the right toy. So... I know the layout pretty well. You've got a, two whole rows devoted to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And then on the map, it goes Star Wars, action figures. And catty corner to that in the pink girls aisle is a uh, pretend play. And I looked at those titles like, wait, action figures and pretend play. Aren't they the same thing? What's the difference? Oh, one's for the girls. Yeah, girls are just pretending. Guys are action. <laughs> Means that guys have no imagination and girls have all the imagination because they can pretend. I guess so. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> that that's that's ridiculous. Uh, the, uh, I like to call uh, it was a night uh, of hearts warming. If I like to call that, uh, it was the night before allergic to yambic pentameter. <laughs> because the comic has the writing is so like I, I, it took me like th- four lines to realize oh wait a minute this is written in rhyme what which one now to me the the, the, the it was the night of hearts warming eve like I didn't realize it's written in rhyme it was the line the stockings were hung by the chimney with care the stuff to the ring with bad gifts from last year that might go up in a flare <laughs> it's like. William Shakespeare is screaming from his grave. Ah, oh, you're not supposed to do it like this. That's not how it works. <laughs> I, oh, kind of figure, I kind of figure it's Big Mac. He probably doesn't have much of a rhyming scheme. Despite the fact uh, that he can keep beat for the pony tones. It, it, it depends on who's writing him. When it's Amy Keating Rogers, it's good. When it's Katie Cook, yeah, it's hit and miss. Well, at least the shipping between uh, Big Mac and Sakura makes sense now. Mm, what? There's a fanfic ship between. Oh, oh well. <laughs> there's there's a ship between <laughs> Big Mac and every mare in Equestria. Yeah, true. Yeah, including his own families. Norman, what about you? What did you think of the of the? Oh, oh, unless you're not uh, Don Silver. I, I'm with you pretty much. Well, that was my favorite. We can talk about each one in, in detail. Basically, it's just fun little twists with a pony spin on old classics. And it's, you know, it's not asking you to, to see it as any deep characterization or epic plot. It is just fun. And I had fun reading it. And as for me, I, if we're talking about favorites, I, I like the flying reindeer. Just because of how absurd it is. Because it's written by Luna. Aww. Absurd. Yeah. Aww. The, the story is fun. It's it's a good read. But there's the Luna self-insert. Like, what? <laughs> uh, still, talk about your... Luna Claus. I know, but talk about your self-insert and just the line of that rogue fruitcake. <laughs> Oh god, I just love this one. You threw that fruit cake. <laughs> it's not rogue. Ah! <laughs> and also the part where she just slams the cart onto Rainbow, Rainbow Deer and <laughs> just forces her to fly. Like, oh god. Uh, I just love this one. Just for how obs- That's, that's my favorite as well, by the way. <laughs> it's just how absurd it is. Like, oh god. I- I, I really like it. I know an artist, uh, c- uh, called Easy Major, who, as soon as he takes a hold of the, of the comic, he's going to see Deer Dash, and he's just going to draw Deer Dash for the, for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. I, I love this one. I think it's the most interesting com- concept of them all. Mm-hmm. Deer Dash is so cute. I know. I yeah. look at that with your, your nose and those deer horns, and it's a 
<laughs> she oh, even has the speed hoofs and everything, and it's and the okay, other ponies down. they're also deer, and they don't ha- they don't have cutie marks, they have deer marks and everything. Uh, and then Princess Luna appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> with a duck. <laughs> Uh, it's a duck related injury. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I do like to see like that picture of Shining Armor and the family there, like just a family photo. That's pretty cool. But I do wonder where's Cadence in that photo? It's only know. toys. It's only toys. Yeah. <laughs> True. But it does make sense if she's there. Like this is a misplay by the artist because the pictures of Twilight with wings and Cadence's family, so yeah. Oh. Oh, so now continuity's a factor. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's Don't... only a factor when it's, when it's, uh, when it's in- useful for your means, I say, Norman. No, it's humans versus ponies. I, with ponies, I'm a bit more strict. Of course you are. Yes, I am. Norman, you make no sense. Norman, you make no sense. You're sicking me with your lies. <laughs> oh boy, let's carry on. What, what are we supposed to do now? Uh, no, talk, let's not talk carry on. Mercilessly. <laughs> I, I, I am not going to let go of this. You are just, you make no sense, Norman. Ah, uh, shush. But anyway, let, let's talk what about... What shush? No, shush, you shut up. You have no idea how to review anything. I We're don't... kicking you out of the show. <laughs> oh, it's so... Silver and James discuss now. But in answer to your question, where's Cadence in that photo? She's obviously behind Twilight's dad's head. Oh, he's, mm. he's obscuring her. <laughs> okay. I'll buy you that. I'll buy you that. So, I do love that how the artwork always writes their little uh emotions right into the frame. Like, Twilight is screaming, and it says anguish <laughs> underneath her uvula. Yeah. <laughs> anguish. The art style that you're watching from the beginning before... That's um, Katie Cook. Yeah, that's Katie Cook's style. So, when I first saw this, it was, oh, this is different. Who drew this? Like, I didn't notice this. But after a few looks i just remembered oh this is katie cook's style and you, yeah. she has you you know because of the little comics that come after all the comics that she uh, she wrote mm. like the story about uh, uh, turn up track yeah the or how luna got her turn? pet uh, hazy turn up track yes yeah. yeah but still i do enjoy the art for katie cook like i think um this is this this one comic here highlights her really well yeah like her interview. artwork is super cute. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, I do like it. I do like it. So, yeah. how, where do we go it's, from it's here? It's very James? children's. Mm-hmm. It, it's basically a children's comic book uh, a style, but it works really well. Now, may I say that Twilight looks adorable, like flying to the camera, going "Yes, <laughs> books!" I <know>. And, <laughs> and the, the the poor coffee pony, he's like, "Oh God, this is how I die. This is the end." Say like, box, and that pony's name is just amazing. What what, what was his name? Uh, oh, I will get it for you. Give me a help. Give me a second. Okay, I think I found it. Uh, his uh, name is Kappa Joe. His short name is Kappa Joe. His name is Mocha Macchiato Cafe Latte Skim. Oh God, oh man. Uh, when I first saw the guy, I thought he was Andy Price's uh, OC. Mm, but no, is it? Uh, it's the goatee and the glasses that throw me off. Yeah. I thought it was uh, it was Andy Price's OC. When Twilight finds out that she has no book to read to Spike, she gets any of the little Philly books that are available at the coffee shop, and mm-hmm. they start with the flying reindeer. And that's the that's the start of the story. That's the start of the comic with the flying reindeer. It's basically the story of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, but with Rainbow Dash, the part of Rudolph, right? And, yeah. and and if they didn't have that terrifying living fuzz animation with the humble bubble, that <laughs> scared me so bad as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about the claymation? Are you one? talking about the ranking bass? Are you talking about the ranking bass animation? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh gosh. Rankin, <laughs> Rankin bass was so awkward, but at the same time, it was so weird and fuzzy. Uh, Silver, is it the movie where? Uh, Rudolph, every time that his nose, uh, lights up, it goes, is, is that yep. the one? Yep. <laughs> oh god, that was so, it was scary. That was scary. <laughs> that was really scary. The humble bubble was just terrifying as a kid, cause it was, the animation already was just kind of freaky. Hmm. Uh, I'm missing out because I got no idea what you're talking about. 
You're not American. I know I'm not. You just don't understand. I'm American. <laughs> I'm not. Probably better off without it. But anyway, but anyway. So we start off with Rudolph the Red Nose Screen, your all rainbow. Yeah, the... and suddenly Princess Luna I... crashes into the comic. Literally. Because she's the one who wrote the story. <laughs> and that's kind of a bit revealing because suddenly you know that you learn that Princess Luna writes kids stories. Which so, is kind of cool. I, I, I yeah, like that. It is kind of cool, but can you imagine Princess Luna telling stories to go to sleep? Oh, it, it's her job, <laughs> Good by the way. Night, moon! <laughs> Good well, night, star! <laughs> oh, she probably wouldn't even say that. Worship upon the moon and the stars. Stay up late. Good night, sun. How about that, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can, can you can no can you imagine can you imagine this uh, now kids we're gonna tell you this other story is titled Go the f- to sleep <laughs> read by Samuel L Jackson real book by the way <laughs> yeah oh by by the way like after Luna appears I I like the cut away to them reading like Princess Luna in this so. book he wrote it <laughs> well okay then <laughs> like That's okay. A- that's a pretty old book. Well, you know, if you look at it, this is Princess Luna before season two because she doesn't have the serial main. Mm-hmm. So you could argue that this story was written before she got banished to the moon. Uh, or it could be written after she came back. That's why we haven't seen a lot of her. Or it could be if she wrote it before she was banished. See, we mm-hmm. can all play the continuity guessing game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you see, normal. no, you see, she wrote this book between Equestria Girls 1 and Equestria Girls 2. But, 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 it makes, makes sense. but it makes more sense if season 2 never happens, so let's go with that. <laughs> so it happened between seasons 1 and 3, but only halfway through season 2, but it never happened, no, that's true. Oh, and it, and it makes even more sense if Trixie replaced uh, Rarity in the main six. Oh, yes, yes, Just and suddenly because... you put a rock instead of Applejack, and you bring Derpy into the scene. <laughs> uh, you but then you will not have it... all of the Dragon Balls in order to summon the dragon and <laughs> find the Da Vinci Code in the bottom of Atlantis. This is the greatest season ever. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are jerks. We are never going to let go of that, Norman. You have no idea what you have given to us. Dude. <laughs> you guys are jerks. <laughs> We love you too. No, you know, no, you know, Silver, we're in trouble because he is the one editing this, so he could be changing our voices to just say, we are such poopy heads. We are such poopy heads. Yes. Well, so, yeah. So, so the strategy then is to mock him so much that if he does edit us out, this will be all of three minutes long. Yes, exactly. That will be it. Yes, we have to keep, ed- yes, we have to keep mocking him. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are jerks. <laughs> well, not as much as Luna, who's throwing fruitcake at fowls. That's foul play. <laughs> I know. Oh, wow. Well, but still. The the moral of the story is, be nice to one another. Because you got no idea who that someone might know a famous person. Yeah, I think they kind of lost it. <laughs> yeah, but still. It's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but still, the art is fun. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. And I always saw that the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, uh, the, 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 the Red Nose Reindeer story, a bit like the Ugly Duckling, but with re- a reindeer instead of ducks. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's basically the, the, the first comic. And comic ends. There you go. And then we go, we move to the next one. And the next one is, I, I'm, it, it's, it's, Two pages long, literally two I pages know. long. I like it. I don't, I, I don't see what's the point of it. Also, there is a, a, a hilariously wrong mis, misinterpretation of a sentence, uh, halfway through the, halfway through the story. It's basically the nutcracker, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It, it's the story of the nutcracker. And there is this one line. It's like, my dearest, stay. There's lots of good stuff coming, like fairies and dancing and me. So you are coming. Okay. Didn't know that you, I was going to find something like that in a kid's comic. You went there, dude. <laughs> you, you had the choice to not go there, but you went there. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, yes, I did. And I don't mind. Oh, I could go there anytime I want. Oh, wow. Look, look, get your mind out of the gutter. What? 
No, it's nice. I like there. It's warm and fuzzy. Oh, it's a bit no. wet, but I don't mind. Uh, no, no, <laughs> yes, no. But still, <laughs> Silver, what what do you think of this one? Like when you first saw this, like were you expecting something serious? No, I was just expecting the Nutcracker, which, to be honest, I haven't really seen or heard very much. Again, my earliest memory is a trippy fe- fuzz animation, like Rudolph. It's kind of funny. That was a thing for a while. It was terrifying. <laughs> I thought they were going to play this serious. And when I read it, it's like, okay, well, this is interesting. Um, they're going for a theater kind of play, and... Once the rat came out, like, okay, I love it. I, I love what you're doing here. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, a mouse king, but they, but Rarity slams the door. And it's too short to really enjoy. It's like just when it's gearing up, mm-hmm. just when it's having some fourth wall humor, it's done. Yeah, but, like, I, but I think the main point of this story is it's Rarity in a theater play and once she knows that there's going to be big giant rats, what was the phrase? Uh, R-O-U-S-S? Rodents of unusual size? Uh, yes. I don't think they exist. <laughs> but it's a, it's a mouse king. Let's, let's be respectful towards yeah, the mighty true, brother. True. There was an animation of all, of this story, um, again, talking about something completely unrelated to the comic, but I remember the one animated movie about the, the Nutcracker story where, God, it was so freaky and nightmarish. They, the, the Nutcracker and the Mousekin, they will have a fight on top of a Christmas tree, and there will be a literally one minute long scene of the Mousekin falling to his death from the top of the Christmas tree. But then at the end of the movie, the Mousekin will come back as a kind of like a zombie and start attacking the protagonist, and I'm like, what? oh god, this is freaky! Yeah, no, seriously, I'm not even joking. It has to be somewhere, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube, because it's one of those... Are you sure this isn't made by Wizard of the Coast? No, <laughs> this was in, this was on TV on the 90s. It was freaky. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure the Nutcracker story. Hmm. Yeah, true, but I, became real. I, I love Rarity here. I just love Rarity. Rarity's just over the top. <laughs> she's, she's aware that she's in the middle of a story. I know. <laughs> but it kind of breaks the old canon because it would be much better if it was Pinky, but eh, it works for Rarity. No, I think that this is all a dream, and it's aware that it's a dream. <laughs> yeah. Because the, in the next panel, Twilight and Spike are sleeping until Cabo Joe wakes them up by dropping some bells. Wow, yeah. And I, I do love Cabo Joe's explanation here. Like, he thought of closing shop early, but eh, there's no one at home to go to. And, and here we have my favorite character of the entire comic. <laughs> Puddles. Puddles, oh. the fish with a present, and his his owner that will never come back home. Oh, <laughs> He's so I, sad. I, I, I just love scene by scene. Like you, first you look at the first scene, it's just like dotted eyes. So it's like okay, cool, fish with presents, and he's not going home. And like, oh my god, I'm so attached to this character. <laughs> we are attra- pain is a connector. We feel that sadness. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, true. But yeah, this leads this leads <laughs> us to um. The last, the third and last uh, story uh, was a night and of hard work and 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 and, and, <laughs> well, and your your favorite and mm-hmm. we, no, I, no, I want it's to know the best. This is oh no, no my, true that my, my opinion I, is law. No, I agree with you, Silver. <laughs> I agree with you that this is the yeah. best out of the two. Okay. Let's not count that rat um, nutcracker. That one was just comedy. It's it, it, it's, it, it's three. I mean, no, come on. Let's count it because okay. it, yeah. it, we, we might be making a disservice to Agnes Karpowska's beautiful Oh, no, I'm not style. saying that it's not... Uh, I'm not saying that her art is not good. I'm just saying the story is almost not existent. Let's not I ignore don't. it because it's there. Yeah, yeah true. And, and, and don't agree with me. It's no fun when you agree no, with okay. me. No, okay. Here's the thing. Ah. I, I do agree that <laughs> this, in terms of art, storytelling, and how rhyme works, it's Good. It's really good. But I like the first ah, one. Ah, what? Ah, blah, blah. I have I have so many problems with the rhyme, and I am no writer. I don't know where you guys see that the rhyme works. It, I don't think it does it's funny. at all. It's, it's to me, it's funny. It the way they wrote it is funny. But honestly, for me, I like the first one because the colors, the art is awesome. The way they written everything is just good. I just like it. I know it's just personal taste for me. Either way, it's still my favorite, and rhyming scheme, 
Right, I mean, scheme be hanged like uh, the stockings. Yay. I, I, I like what I like. In fact, it's kind of funny that uh, there appears to be rope in one of the stockings. Mm. I assume that's Applejack's lasso, but we, we can adapt. No, no, that, that is Applejack because uh, you. Who wants a hanging? Yeah, that's. It's it's what it's one of them is basically tells the story. It's like, I love that Granny Smith is not really a stocking, but it's Acme's support host. <laughs> like, nice. It's what it says, Acme support host. I know, right there. But uh, and, <laughs> I wonder support for what. And <laughs> then it's Apple Bloom, AJ. It's in the middle. She's the most simple one, and then Big Mac with a giant B on it. I'm a B. I'm a B. I'm a I'm a I'm a B. I'm a B. But yeah, I mean, uh, please tell us what uh, what uh, makes you like this uh, this uh, story so much. What what do you think of it? Well, "Twas the Night Before Christmas" is one of the best poems. Mm-hmm. It's classic. It is synonymous with Christmas. Uh, but mostly, it's just the artwork, the combination of Big Macintosh's character, uh, getting to see an image of of Applejack trying to assemble while a uh, Chicken wields a hammer. Okay. I swear I didn't take anything before I read this. <laughs> yeah. But right now, kind of feeling it. Uh, the expressions, the heartfelt that they're, what they're trying to make. And like I say, Big Mac, following the gender, gender roles of, I don't play with dolls, they're action figures. Yeah. There's an action now, figure, it's a doll. Now help me, help me swap the uniform pants. <laughs> 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 Something must be said about the art style because uh, Andy Price, bless the guy, but each one of the panels, it's it it is more detail and it has like a bit more work put into like your usual MLP comic when it's uh, drawn by him. Like it, they feel warm and they feel very much like Christmas. When Andy Price touches a comic, especially pony comics, he likes to go with full detail and. Uh, God bless, uh, Heather for doing the colors because, oh my God, she has a yeah, lot of- Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, show me on the, on the action figure where Andy Price touched the comic. <laughs> 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 right, right that around the chest area on the oh heart. Oh God, no. <laughs> but anyway, still. Yeah, I was doing something heartwarming. Shut up, Norman. Yeah. yeah, but still, I do, I do like this one because this comic or this, yeah, this part, really focus more on the rhyme and story or was it poem you said silver well it, it's technically a poem yeah but but this it's a poem that tells a story lots of poems do that yeah so it focus more on the poem instead of the art but the art is there just to emphasize the whole story so it works i i like it so, and it's just a nice little tale. I mean, that the, that the sisters would do this for their brother, that they nearly kill themselves three times over. At 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. And Granny Smith is just there. Why are you young and awake at 2 in the blessed a.m.? <laughs> That's uh, how you get the rickets. Uh, well. What's a ricket? I didn't get that one. That's lost in translation for me. It's like a cricket, but, uh, no, not at all. Let's see here. Rickets. Rickets is a defective mineralization or calcification of the bones before epithelial closure in the Im- immature mammals due to deficiency or impaired metabolism of vitamin D, phosphorus or calcium, potentially leading to fractures and deformity. See? Simple. Oh, okay. So, so basically, basic, okay. basically, you're not getting enough of what you need, and so your bones aren't setting right. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I do have to say about this one, I am I the only one who really wants to have a children's book? Illustrated by Andy Price. I'd be game. If you put it that way, yeah, I want some more. I totally want one. I, w- I really do want one because holy cow, it looks so pretty. I love it. Mm-hmm. Although, now that I'm looking at this and I'm noticing, uh, on page 16, with when Applejack and Applebaum are trying to move the present of Big Mac and everything, uh, am I the only one who's trying to figure out where is the rest of Applejack's torso? Uh, it's covered by the scarf. Oh, Pancho, yeah. But her legs, her forelegs and her hind legs are very close together. And, like, what is the rest of her body? It's like, she has the neck, then the leg, then the, hi- the foreleg, and then the hind leg. Yeah. Hi- are you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but it's behind the Pancho. 
So yeah, and Apple take with a poncho. No, no, That's it's cool. not behind the pon. It's not behind the poncho. Behind the poncho is her tail. No, in front of the poncho, like it's covered. Yeah, yeah. a poncho is going in front and behind her. I just see that when a pony stands upright, uh, the hind quarters kind of merge with the body visually. Mm. I mean, similar uh-huh. to what how apple blooms looking. Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of funny. Uh, oh, who's the artist who draws the ponies in more human styles? Did the pinky uh, Celestia, uh, my friends forever. Uh, Celestia friends forever. Uh, like that's uh, Jay Foskett. People raise a stink when Foskett has the ponies moving like humans. Well, here's two ponies moving like humans, and no one, no one is crying foul. I'm crying foul. <laughs> Pay and, attention uh, to me. <laughs> or unless the unless the goose from the first story is making a reappearance. No, but yeah, I think I think it's different because Jay Foskett's uh, Jay Foskett's artwork. It's uh, uh, the way that he he works. It's like it's very cartoony in its nature. Like just just for the fact that the characters have massive hooves. So like yeah, but a uh, personal opinion. It's just the one nitpick on a rather uh, excellent looking uh, comic. I do enjoy ponies with article of clothing on, like the poncho. That's cool. The only time I see ponchos is where cheese sandwich was wearing it. Either way, it's it's a fun visual. I don't really get hung up on mm-hmm. mostly because I think it's just sort of adorable how Applejack's carrying the whole thing and Apple Bloom's just trying to lift one corner. Yeah. And did they really, like, did they really want to put it in the chimney? Like, put it, like, get it in through the chimney? Thinking that Big Macintosh wouldn't see it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Bad logic. Yep. Bad logic. But yeah, I, I, I want to talk about the way that the rhyming is a structure. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole, e- because, like I said before, this is an iambic pentameter nightmare. I don't see the rhyme whatsoever in many of the uh, paragraphs I don't it's just it doesn't it doesn't uh, go all that well uh, at least for me it's like there is there is this one example the one sister called out to the farm animals helping now Bessie now Porkchop now Clucky and you there that's yelping it's like it's too long it goes for far too long am I the only one who's seeing this no, no, there's, there are many, there are many cases where in some ways the bad rhyming scheme is part of the fun. Mm-hmm. This is Big Mac trying to be poetic. <laughs> despite the fact that this is Cup of Joe's favorite story, it's really awful. I mean, the rhyming at least. Yeah, I, I don't know. Now, now that you think about it, like going from story to story, like we've realized that, okay, you have Rainbow Deer. Is it really a rainbow or is it Rudolph? And then we got the Nutcracker. It's rarity instead of a uh, random pony. Okay, that's interesting. And they cut it out by rarity not wanting to work with a mouse. Well, I'm not complaining about the setting. The setting is fine. What I'm complaining about is the execution of the writing. It's the only problem that I have with it. No, I'm just going from scene to scene. And once we get this one, um, this is Cup of Joe's favorite story. And it's told from Big Mac's point of view or the way he reads it. So, wait, is this... How it's supposed to be, or is this for us, the fans who are reading this right now? I think we're going very meta here. Yeah. Basically, it's it's a fun story, and they set it to relatable characters. I'm just rolling with that. And I, I say again, the bad rhyming is kind of the charm. I think I feel like this would be Big Macintosh's attempt at poetry. No, but still, I enjoy this one. But I like the first one better. Yeah, after this one... The comic is pretty much, well, we are pretty much at the end of the comic when the doors of the station open and the main six, uh, well, the rest of the main six come to Twilight's Aid to celebrate their hearts warming party with them. Yeah, but that was very scary. <laughs> they exchange presents. Rainbow Dance exchanges presents with herself. Pinky acknowledges that she <laughs> did break it and enter in <laughs> somebody else's house to take a fish. Just because. And uh, Fluttershy got Applejack and Apple. <laughs> and also, what what is a registry? Is that like a wish list on Amazon or something? I'm gonna Regist- su- I'm gonna assume yes. It, when you when your events like getting married, you can reg- you can file a registry for gifts you'd like uh, at various stores, and it's like a database. 
you it's a way to make sure you have some people have an idea of what to get you and they uh and you have an idea of what kind of set a budget for friends you know don't spend this much on me or if you're a terrible person get a second mortgage for my gift <laughs> <laughs> however I, I will say there's one joke that didn't fly oh just which one, one? Where they left Big Mac in an ice crevice. Oh, or is that it one. pronounced crevasse? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that one. Poor Big Mac. Like, oh god. I like, was... hey, we, we left a pony to die. That's uh, that's funny. Ha ha. <laughs> uh. Murder. Ha ha. Murder. And also, Rainbow Dash breaks the fourth wall, and Pinkie Pie is like, hey, breaking the fourth wall is my bit. Oh yeah, that one. Still, still, I, I just, eh, it's fun, it's for the funds. Leaving someone to die, yes, that's, that's great humor. <laughs> next, next comic, it's, it's, it's like zombie Big Mac, he's back for revenge. Yup. <sighs> oh my gosh. But yeah, okay, so uh, is that it yep. for this comic? That's is, the comic. That will be, holy cow. So, uh, Okay, final thoughts, guys. Uh, what do you, what, okay, final thoughts on, on this one. Yes, because we already gave the ones on the 2014 one. So yeah, final thoughts on this one. Uh, as, as always, go ahead, Silver, you first. Oh, it's a fun, easygoing, uh, set of stories with good humor, some fun interactions, very, varying degrees of success, but all in all enjoyable all around. There's, the, aside from the Big Mac joke, there's nothing that really makes you go, what? <laughs> So, yeah, just don't leave your siblings in ice crevasses. A, a lesson for this holiday season. And as for me, yeah, it's an innocent comic. It's nothing to go over, but it's still fun and it's cute. I like it. Katie Cook's art here does this comic justice. I like it. To me, this one feels a lot more like, uh, like, like a true holiday special. It, like the colors, the atmosphere, it's very pretty. I like that it's more like an anthology kind of thing where you have different stories being told through different art styles all wrapped together by the same writer. Um, Rainbow Dash as a deer is absolutely adorable. She's, she's the cutest of them all. And overall, yeah, I think this is a more enjoyable comic than I first thought. So... Because I went into this one with the stigma of the of uh, the 2014 one, and I was like, "Oh, this is going." But no, this is a lot more interesting. At least on the visual side of things, it's a lot more interesting. Next, do the same thing next year, but with different artists. The MLP comics have a lot of artists. You can totally afford to have more people in it. Just have each person draw a page. I've seen that happen before, and it's very weird but very interesting. So yeah, I liked it. I, I recommend it. Sweet. All right, so that's for today's uh, reviews. Uh, what are we going to be recording and reviewing next time, guys? Uh, I've got no idea, man. Like This episode is going to be posted on Christmas Eve, and if you're listening on Christmas Eve, um, have a Merry Christmas, yay, and a Happy Holiday. Perhaps we should, uh, by the time this airs, then the Siege of the <clears throat> Crystal Empire shall have concluded. Ah, yeah. And oh, oh gosh, are we going to talk about that one? I don't know. Oh, child, we are going to have such a time chatting about that one. Well, yeah, true that, true that. But hey, <laughs> but hey. I'm scared. I haven't read any yet, and I don't know if I want to. Oh, you do, you do. The Christmas cheer shall evaporate within uh, a few hours of talking of this. <laughs> the fan rage shall flow. Oh, yes, true. But fan hey. rage? Wait, wait, wait. People were mad about this comic? No. The... Any fandom never hates anything. We are not love and tolerant. Eh? <laughs> Sorry. Well, anyway, but anyway. It kind of, it, it kind of gets to me whenever, whenever, uh, the, the, the MLP fandom hates something and they go, oh no, the rage, the drama, and I'm like, <sighs> uh, let, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about it. It's just the season to be jolly and let's just enjoy this. Your pain makes me jolly. <laughs> uh, but, but it's just, I don't know, for what, whatever we review next, or whatever we talk about on next, on the next administrative review, I know we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna do it as a family. Yes? Norm Norman, Norman, 
Shut up. <laughs> only if oh, only if you selectively forget per- certain portions of this review. <laughs> I decide to forget about the part where you call us a family. But no, come on, did you know? Uh, I'm going to forget that you sounded like a deflating tire on helium. Aww. Yeah, and I'm going to forget that you sounded like a mouse being squeezed by a pile driver. <laughs> oh, you guys are mean. Yes, I'm going to I, decide to, I, I'll decide to forget that. I, I, I choose to hold on to that to remember how your tears are delicious. <laughs> oh, anyway, James, let's end this. No, I'm not, ta- <laughs> we're not done taunting you yet. <laughs> I could, I could keep going all day, but I'm running out of ideas. You guys are gonna get a love of coal for Christmas. That's confirmed. Hey, do you know how cold it can get over here? Coal is a is an efficient burning source. Oh yeah, for you it'll be bad comics. I'll totally, I'll totally use the coal. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, listening to us. If you want to leave any com- uh, to let us know in the comments what you think of it, of our review, what do you think of it, what do you do for Christmas, all that, and uh, as always, we're happy to receive your emails. At what email, Norman? Unless you forgot about it, <laughs> it's at mbsshowgmail.com. Are you sure that that I'm has sure. not? I'm sure. I've been I've been okay. saying that phrase for two years. Wait, no, no, two, three, four, four years. <laughs> We're three years now. Norman, I'm starting to get con- uh, concerned about your uh, memory skills. This is really affecting you, man. So, you guys have been jerks. <laughs> you guys have been jerks. <laughs> Shut up. And then he's gonna go into the corner and have himself a good cry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> See you guys on the next episode review. Bye bye. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a hug fest and offer him up to Almighty Lord Krampus. Oh, dude, that movie was awesome. Okay, that's it. See you all next time. Bye bye. Yeah, okay, bye bye. <laughs> He forgot to say goodbye. Oh, gosh. This is getting worse. Adios. 